Good morning. It's about, actually, it's it's, it's almost close to noon. It's, it's almost 11 o'clock, and uh, we're doing some prototyping still, and we're deciding some launcher things, and uh, we got a big day today. So, taking a break from caddying, and I'm making some. They could be prototypes, but if they work work really well, they might be the real deal for our intake arm. Um, so. We still don't have a shooter that really shoots well enough, or a launcher that, that has enough power. We've done a lot of testing with our pneumatic launcher. We were doing some okay launches, but it seemed like we want, it wasn't quite um, forceful enough, so we want some more force with our, with our launch. We still are exhausting our last effort to try the pneumatic launcher to work and we're dealing with 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 CV flow issues on the valves that's really the limiting factor so we're, we're adding more valves more cylinders and um, trying to, to launch the arm we were thinking it'll work but it also we also got to make sure it's legal with with first pneumatic rules so in the meantime over here I gotta show you something So this is our launcher analysis um, board. And notice it's 11 o'clock. We have an 11 o'clock deadline that we set, and they're almost ready to test here to decide which launcher direction we can go. Right now, the, the easiest one to make, if it works, is the pneumatic lever arm. I mean, the pneumatic. A cylinder would be pushing it up very quickly in order to launch the balls. Another way to do that launch would be a, a winch with a dog shifting release so there would be some sort of a bungee spring or something that would be pulling the arm up and the and the dog shifter would release that arm to let it fling itself up. Another way to do that would be to cam drive the arm down with a bungee cord or spring to pull it up pretty much the same pulling or force method with with the winch method but a different rep method to release and trigger the throw in this case with a cam in that case with a winch there's another way to do it with a with a linkage but that is more complex than a cam now the cam I have on my computer here but this is a six inch outside diameter and this is a two inch outside diameter here and so the the distance of the radius from this edge to this edge is two inches. So this is a two inch cliff that it would fall off when the cam would go around this way. The cam follower or bearing would be right here and it would fall off and hit that. And that would be a very rapid um, release, a bearing or a cam um, follower that would release the arm to go up. Within a few minutes we'll know which way we're going to go because I think we're going to, if the pneumatic doesn't work, we're going to go with the cam release because the winch has a lot more parts and it's just more difficult to make because there's more custom pieces to make. So today we are wiring up the drive base right now. <laughs> Rick's wiring up the drive base. We're actually building our bumpers early because the bumpers, this is an overall assembly view of our robot right now. The big goofy looking thing on top is our ball trajectory. So if you look at this, you can see the ball intake coming in here. It flows up into this area where it's gonna be launched and then this is our launch path of the ball trajectory after it gets catapulted out of the drive base. So we're pulling in, we're pulling in from one side and launching it out the other side. And then um, these bumpers, we're actually building the bumpers because we think that the bumpers can help us funnel the ball into the entry point of the robot. So the, the edges of the bumpers will actually act as a funnel for the, the ball to enter into the catapult area. So I'll let you go, um, and I'll get back to work. So thanks, see you later.